Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you, are you ready to just press in a little bit more with me today? God is speaking. Who will hear? Amen. I drove in this morning and I noticed a whole lot of new parking places over here. Did anybody happen to see that? Just in time for our fall season and all the growth that God is bringing into the house. And wow. Labor Day weekend, and look at you. You showed up to the house of God to worship, and I'm happy you're here. Amen? What better way to spend a holiday weekend with your family than start it off in the house of God on Sunday morning, giving him the praise that's due his name and honoring the one that gives us the strength to labor. Amen? I want to share quick testimony from our Kentucky uh, River campus. Last week you got to enjoy the Indiana saints that came over from Indiana and worship with us and we had some fellowship and they were able to really uh, spend some quality time here. And this morning I got a picture and a text from River Kentucky and uh, they reported last week they had a really good crowd and people that came with addictions were delivered and people were saved in the river in Lexington. Hallelujah. Yes. So your, your love, your support, your missions giving and so forth is reaching lost souls, uh, places you may never see or know. So I want to thank you for continually contributing to that mission spot on your offering envelope. If you give online, you have the option to click into those different areas along with our building and parking. And I want to thank uh, Jim Lipka and his crew and uh, especially Clark Sheets and CNC Farms. Uh, I asked Clark one Sunday if he knew anybody that had a bulldozer, and being a farmer, I just figured he might have one or knew somebody that did, and uh, I think he brought his whole farm over here pretty much, <laughs> but he just, he just opened up his heart and said, whatever we need, let's get this parking lot done, and uh, made it happen. Thank you. Appreciate you. Amen. And a whole bunch of volunteers back breaking, sweating, a couple of days, it was over 100 heat index, and people were out there in ditches with shovels, and men of God and women of God working, serving, and doing what God called us to do, and it's really paid off. I'm really, really happy about that. Let me encourage you, um, tomorrow on Labor Day, it, I believe this was set aside to honor the working folks. How many of you are working don't be ashamed to be named as a working person. I, I work sometimes. I work here on the weekends. And uh, I'm not ashamed to be called a worker. Amen. And uh, if you work, you do need to rest. You do need a day off every now and then. And I hope that your place of employment has blessed you with tomorrow off. If they didn't, set aside a day of your own that you can be off and rest. Amen? And try not to fill that day up with going and doing and catching up on all the chores. Try to honor your own body by resting. So today I want to talk to you uh, on something the Lord dropped in my spirit about three weeks ago. I thought I was going to share it, and then he come along and brought me an, another message, and so I feel like today the timing of what uh, Sarah and George and uh, Jan had shared, um, 
is just confirming what I believe the Lord wants to say to us today. But I was, uh, I, I believe I was driving, and I just heard the Lord say, listen up. I believe the word of the Lord to the church of today is, listen up. You know, uh, a leader sometimes will walk into a room, a uh, group, and say, listen up. And everybody stops, and everybody turns, and everybody looks and listens to what is about to be announced, what is about to be spoken. God has come to the earth and to his church and to his people with an announcement. God wants to bring us in on what he's doing. He is doing some stuff right now. And he wants you and I in a, nothing worse than being in a, a corporation or, or a, a team of people and feeling like everybody knows what's going on but me. I don't like that. I, I want to be included. I want to be informed. I want to know what's going on. How about you? If you're in the kingdom of God, it's imperative that you know what's going on. Don't be left out. Don't miss this. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, listen up. I titled today's message, Listen Up. And I want to put the emphasis on up. Listen. Point up with me. Yeah, there you go. Listen up. There's a lot of being said around and down, but I want to listen up. I want to hear from heaven direction. I want to hear what's being said above what I'm involved in. I want to know what's up there that I can reach and pull down. I want to get involved in the activity of the spirit realm and not just be caught up in my own little busyness. How about you? Turn with me, if you would, to Jeremiah chapter 25. And I'm going to be very elementary today. I'm not, I don't, I, as I studied this and I, I pondered this, I thought, well, Lord, there's nothing deep. I, I, I don't have that nugget that everybody's going to go repost on Facebook. That preacher's like that. You know, we like to be quoted. We like to have that memorable line that people take home and chew on and pass around and make a t-shirt, you know. <clears throat> I wasn't getting any of that. It's just elementary. You, from the be beginning of life, you have to be told sometimes, hey, listen to me. All of us do. I mean, the best listeners in here, we still have to be reminded, hey, listen, listen up. Right now over in the other building and out here in three or four classrooms, teachers are saying, shh, hey, listen up, stop. Stop talking. I'm talking right now. Didn't you hate that when you were in school? And the teacher said, only one of us can talk at a time, and that one is not you. Jed's grinning. I bet you were told that, weren't you? Your daddy told you that. <laughs> okay. Jeremiah 25, 4. And the Lord has sent to you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them. But you have not listened, nor inclined your ear to hear. I would submit to you today that if the world were waiting on the word to be preached, 
to be saved, we would have been saved many times over by the amount of words that have been spoken, words of life, words of love, words of the gospel have been preached in all the world. It's not a famine of preaching, it's a famine of hearing. I know for me, I've heard thousands, tens of thousands, perhaps more sermons than you can imagine. For many years of my life, it was an every night deal to be in church, to hear a sermon, camp meetings where you would hear three, four, five sermons a day. And I would attend 10 or 12 of those in each summer with my dad who would preach many of those camps or teach the lesson during the day services of those camp meetings. I've heard a lot of preaching and brother Dave, I've heard more than I'm doing. I don't mean to, to not be doing it all, but, but there's a, a lot more that I've heard than what I've obeyed. Would you somewhat agree with that if we just inclined our ear to what we already know most of us would have enough to live on the rest of our lives in that context but it's more than just hearing preaching and stories and analogies and reading books and watching YouTubes and reading articles and blogs and podcasts and all of these things, it's inclining your ear to hear. Oftentimes I'll listen to a 30 or 40 or 50 minute message and hear a one liner out of all of it. They say you comprehend about 5% of the teaching that you hear. I probably retained much less because I didn't pay attention in school like I should have. I was more interested in sports and girls and (laughs) things that probably haven't helped me much in my adulthood. I was jealous of those kids that paid attention because now they're smart and they're doing stuff, you know, and I'm like, if I would have just paid attention in that class, I could have saved myself a whole lot of trouble. How many have heard the term, are you listening to me? <laughs> Kenny, you, you ever said that to your children? Are you listening to me? Do you hear what I'm telling you? Do you hear me? That's a question we hear a lot. How about this one? Look at me when I talk to you. (laughs) Simeon's at that stage. You start talking and his head drops or his eyes wander. And you have to say, okay, Simeon, eye to eye. Look at me. Let's get this eye to eye thing going. Jeremiah 5, 21 says, Hear this now, O foolish people without understanding, who have eyes and see not, and who have ears and hear not. Just because you have ears doesn't mean that you hear. Just because the level of my microphone is such that you can hear what I'm saying doesn't mean that you're Hearing by the Spirit. Being a good listener comes natural sometimes for some, and for, and for most of us, it is a discipline that we have to enact. It's a skill that is practiced and learned by most of us, I think, to become a good listener. The mind wants to run ahead if you're 
a quick thinker. You want to run ahead and figure out what they're going to say and kind of get into your own prophetic mind thinking you know what they're going to say before they say it and then you don't remember what they said because you weren't paying attention because you already knew you thought you had the answer. And I'm preaching to me and my wife's relationship because I ask her a question and walk away and have to go back and ask her again because I don't remember what she said. And it's not because my memory's bad. It's because I wasn't paying attention to her. Ah, I want to be a better listener, don't you? And all of that is just a reminder of our relationship with the Lord. I, if there's anybody that I want to listen to and not do all the talking with, it's God himself. If there's anybody that I really want to hear from, oh, I went to see my parents this week and hearing my mother's voice is so wonderful to hear in person the people you love. And spent time with my dad just sitting and listening to him talk and my brother my youngest brother videoed him telling stories from the 40s when he was five six seven years old he's telling us these stories I'm like how do you remember stuff when you were five I mean that's 83 years ago you know a lot of water's run under the bridge since 1941 but he was just rattling off these stories of World War II and his uncles and the military and the Marines and all of these things. And I loved it. I love hearing his voice. But there's a voice that I want to hear more than the voice of my father, the voice of my wife, the voice of my children. Yes, and even my grandchildren's voices are so precious. But I want to hear him. Little Sayla's developing her voice. She found another part of her voice in, on a, our trip in Mississippi. And I heard this long sound from her voice. And I thought, I, is she crying? And, and then I realized she wasn't crying. She was laughing. But she had found her laughing voice. And she had these long laughing, cooing sounds that finally have come out. She's three months old. And music to our ears i mean we egg it on we video it we record it we you know we all line up and everybody and we send it text it to all of our friends listen to this sailor found her voice she's laughing she's happy but more than i cherish that precious little voice i want to hear him how about you Matthew 17 and 5, and I am going somewhere with this, I trust, and I hope you will hang in there with me. While he was still speaking, now let me, let me go ahead and set this up. This is what we call the Mount of Transfiguration. This is where Moses and Elijah showed up on the mountain with Jesus. Somebody say, that's pretty cool. I mean, if they showed up here on this platform, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, I think we'd have a Holy Ghost meeting, Lois, if, if that happened today. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love, with whom I am well pleased and the NIV says listen to him now that that would do it for me right there I, I've been walking with Jesus I've been thinking he was somebody really special I I've been believing in him as a prophet and, and the son of God and all of this but when Moses and Elijah show up and the cloud of witnesses, I'm, I'm in. And, and then a voice from a cloud, a, a real cloud, 
says, this is my beloved son whom I love. Listen to him. I'm there. Are you with me? Can you imagine? And you may not have had a Moses and Elijah experience, but in your life, you need times and places and things you can point to that were confirming to you that you need to hear him, that you need to pay attention to what the word of the Lord says. Young people, if you could only listen to your elders as you're going through life, and when the temptation comes to think you know more about where you're going than your parents or your grandparents or your mentors or your teachers or your pastors, if you could only resist that for a moment and imagine Moses and Elijah showing up, They've been dead a few hundred years and looking at you and grabbing you by the shoulders and the Holy Spirit coming down and speaking to you and saying, hey, you need to listen to your daddy. I had an aunt like that. She was my Moses and Elijah. My mother would try to get me to do something and I was rebellious. Amen. I mean, when you're a certain age, you know, your parents just don't, they just don't know. You just, I can't believe you're asking me to do this because you just don't know. You don't understand me. And then Aunt Joanna would show up. Paul, you need to listen to your mother. Okay, I'll go to the doctor. <laughs> and I did it. Sometimes we need a Moses and Elijah experience. Sometimes we need a cloud to speak to us and say, hey, I'm speaking to you. You need to listen. Amen? Amen. In John 10, one of my favorite passages, we'll start in verse 27 my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. My sheep hear my voice. Now, when someone walks up to you and says, God spoke to me the other day, we seem to treat that like it's a big, big deal, a big moment. And it is, don't get me wrong. But in reality, it should be, my sheep hear my voice. It shouldn't surprise us. We shouldn't look at somebody like, yeah, you're weird. God talked to me. God said to me. God said, God said. It shouldn't be weird and strange and odd. But that's where we are having ears to hear we hear not and I'll be honest with you most of the people around through the years in my life that were constantly saying God said this and God said that I think they were just trying to prop up what they really wanted to do and didn't want me to mess with it and they were misrepresenting the Holy One of Israel because he had not, certainly not spoken to them, but it was easier for them to get their agenda through by just blaming it on God. How tragic. What a horrible thing. 
I would rather hear from God and speak that word to you in love and in the spirit of God than to just grab you up and say, God said. Amen? Because my sheep hear my voice, I think oftentimes we don't have to say God said. If it's really his voice and they're really his sheep, they will know. Whoa, that was from the Lord. I better pay attention to that because the spirit that it came in confirms to me that it was from the Lord and not from man. Amen. Now, some people serve a silent God, a mute God. They, they don't believe God ever talks to anybody at any time ever. And maybe they have just reason to believe it by virtue of the fact that so many people who said God said weren't really God's messenger, and it's turned a lot of people off. But I would submit to you that the book of Acts never had a the end. And I would submit to you that Revelation 22 and verse 21 is not the last words that ever came out of the mouth of God. Because the word of the Lord is eternal and his word is proceeding. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, don't jump on that and take off and say, well, the, the Bible don't matter because I'm just hearing what God says today. The now word, I want the rhema. No, I and my father are one. The logos and the rhema are one. If you heard it from God, it will 100% align with what is written. It will not contradict. It will not water down. It will not change what is written for thy word is forever settled in heaven. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. This is not just another storybook. This is not just a digest of 66 books collected over history. This is the word of the living God. This is his voice in your life. And if you feel like you can't hear him, Open the pages and read it again. He is speaking through his word. This is a living word. If you'll get it in you, you will live. And it will live again. Nothing wrong with putting it on a speaker and letting it play. But more than we need to just hear the syllables pronounced in the English language, we need to see it lived. We need to see it come alive in love, in action, in ways, in character, in integrity. Amen. It's okay to get quiet when you're taking introspection. I understand. I check myself the same way. I read this book because I want it to change me. It has the power to transform your life. <clears throat> One passage calls it the mirror of his word. What I like about it, it's not just a mirror. I don't just read in it and say, oh, my God. Oh, I am a miserable fellow. Look in that mirror. Look at you. Whoo! You need some help. It's, it, what I like about this mirror is it don't just condemn me. See, when I look in the mirror at home, there's some things I can do something about. That's why I have a mirror. But there's a lot of things in that mirror that I don't like. And I can't do nothing about it. But when I look in this mirror, <laughs> it's not just the mirror. Y'all have one of them magnifying mirrors? 
Woo! Concave mirror. This is like a magnifying mirror to me sometimes. Like, whoa, dude. You got work to do, man. You better get busy. No, this is not just a mirror. This, my friends, is a total makeover. I said, this is a total man makeover. Oh, it won't just make you look better. It'll make you live better, feel better, act better, walk better, sound better, hear better. It's a total makeover. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Michael Jackson sang a song, I'm starting with the man in the mirror, asking him to change his ways. That's a powerful line. Genesis 3 and verse 8, Adam and Eve could hear God. I love this relationship up until about right about chapter 3. It was so cool what they had with God. But in verse 3 and ch uh, chapter 3 and verse 8, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees in the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And the Lord said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? So Adam and Eve are in the cool of the day. I would surmise this is the time that they had their normal walk or stroll with the Lord. Just imagine the, a life where you can get up early every morning and take a walk in a beautiful garden with the Lord. No ear buds, ear pods, ear whatever they call those things. Just you and the Lord in the cool of the day. And imagine a life where every evening, summer, winter, spring, or fall, in the cool of the evening, when the temperature drops and the sun is still up enough that you can see your way, walking on a long stroll with the Lord in a beautiful garden in the cool of the day. Adam and Eve had this. And now they find themselves hiding from the very one that they used to stroll with in communion, in conversation. It was perfect. It was awesome. But the Lord says in verse 17 to Adam, Because thou hast hearkened, to the voice of thy wife, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face, shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground for out of it wast thou taken 
for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. The saddest moment in history was when man's relationship with God, man's hearing of the Lord was the most beautiful song, the most beautiful music ever heard was Adam and God in the cool of the day. I can only imagine the melodies and the tunes that came out of this and the lyrics of the most precious and beautiful audible sounds ever known to man were in that garden. And I can only just in my imagination, certain flowers when their feet would touch them would give off the sound of a harp and certain, you know what I'm saying? Certain scenes would just emote sprinkles of crystals sounding in their ears and beautiful pitches and notes and harmonies and melodies just playing around them everywhere they went. And now the very voice of the Lord, the song that used to make their heart leap with enthusiasm and, and anticipation, they couldn't wait to see him. Now they're hiding from their only source of love. What tragedy, what travesty, what unbelievable agony and anguish they must be experiencing now. All of this because Adam listened to the wrong voice. Look at somebody and say, you can listen to the wrong voice. You see, 1 Corinthians 14, there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. 1 Corinthians 14, 10. There are, it may be, so many voices in the world and none of them is without signification. Pay attention to what you're listening to. Beware of voices. In Adam's case, it wasn't a dirty movie. It wasn't a filthy paperback book off of a shelf. It wasn't negative news on the television. It, it wasn't a, a feed coming, popping up on his Facebook. In Adam's case, it was the love of his life, the one created from his side, his very own partner, Eve. Eve was the wrong voice to hearken. You all know that word hearken? You teach it to your children and, and it'll help you in your parenting. Hey, you need to hearken. Amen. It starts with here. Hearken is H-E-A-R. Here. You can't spell here without ear. Right? So you got to have an ear to hear. You can't spell heart without ear. You know that? Hearken means to hear and then act like you heard. I'm just going to put it in a Paul Bishop told you I'd be elementary today. You hear and then you act like you heard. Adam didn't just hear Eve. He heard and then he hearkened to what he heard. He ate of the forbidden fruit because he was listening to the wrong voice. And the reason Eve's word was so poison to him was because she listened to the lying serpent. And it turned everything topsy-turvy. There's a lot of things being said in the earth. And I am amazed at how many people believe what they hear without fact-checking. 
I'm amazed at how many people believe that if it's in print, then it, it's got to be true. Surely there's somebody out there that catches all the printers and fixes them before they get things out that would tell us a lie. Surely if it's on camera and on the screen in front of me, I laugh about one of our relatives told us something and Paula said, is that true? Well, yeah, it was on YouTube. I'm <laughs> um, sorry. We, we are vulnerable. We, I mean, we laugh at that, but, but that's just a magnification of some of the nonsense we carry on because we hear the wrong voices. We're listening to the wrong station. We're tuned in and focusing on the negative that the serpent is still peddling the same old lies. I mean, I don't have to go very far to find somebody that says, do you really think a loving God would send people to a burning lake of fire? Come on. God wouldn't do something like that. You know how old that argument is? The serpent with Eve. Did God really say you couldn't eat of that tree? Oh, come on. God wouldn't make a tree and then tell you not. Did he really say you would surely die? You know how much God loves you. He, you won't really die. The fact that we got sickness and disease all around us, they're building hospitals right and left. The biggest business on planet Earth is health care. That ought to tell you that, yes, there will be punishment for sin. And if you don't teach that to your little bitty children, they trust me, they get it. So, oh, they're not old enough to understand. Oh, yeah, they understand. They're playing you like a fiddle. They got your number way before you think they do. And if they don't understand that there's consequences for actions real early, like really, really, really early, I mean, save us three months and she already knows some things that she can do and get certain things. Well, I can't let her cry. Oh, do her a favor. Let her cry a little bit. That'd be good for her to cry a little bit. Amen? She's not going to die from crying. That's what they do. They cry. Get used to it. You can get over it. You say, oh, I love them. No, you love you. If you don't discipline your children because you think you love them, no, you're making it all about you. You just want temporary peace and temporary. I'm preaching about listening. Listen up. <laughs> I didn't mean to get off on that, but you can thank me later. Here's one. Adam and Eve feared the voice of the Lord. Why did they fear the voice of the Lord? Because they had sin in their heart, sin in their life, and they didn't understand mercy yet. They didn't understand grace yet. Exodus chapter 20, Moses, the people said to Moses, verse 19, you speak with us and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Yeah. He's a severe God. They didn't just make that up. They had read about Adam and Eve. 
Moses had all that in his book. In his, he wrote these books about Adam and Eve. And they understood that the severity of God. And these people he's talking to were messed up. I mean, you read the chapters in front of this, and you'll find out that these folks were, they were not really doing it the way God intended them to do things. And so Moses is told by the people, hey, we need a filter from God. We need, you talk to us. Don't, don't move out of the way and let God hit us. We want, we want you to help us. Because if, if he talks to us, we'll just die. But God's perfect will is never for you to let a messenger of God become God. It's not God's intention for the messenger in your life, and, and you should have messengers in your life, but it's not God's intention for those messengers to ever become in the place of God. God wants to walk with you in the cool of the day, in the garden of his paradise, every day, 101. He wants alone time with you. Look at somebody and say, listen up. Romans 10, 16, I'm skipping a little bit, Jason, so go with me. They have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing. Oh, pastor, I, I, I just need more faith. I just want more faith. I just realize that I don't have enough faith. Faith then comes by hearing. Hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you want to fix your hearing, hear the word. Open it up, read it out loud. Open it up, read it out loud. I could go on a whole sermon of how the people of Israel cried with a loud voice, how the word of the Lord was written in their hearing, the Bible said, how shouts of praise go forth. You ever read the Psalms in character? I did that for several months after I received a, what the doctors would call a life sentence. I just open up my psalms every day and read it in character. If David was shouting, I was shouting. If David was weeping, I was weeping. If David was depressed, I got depressed. And I just got in character and just went through the psalms and read it. Whoo! I mean, it's, there's a difference in reading it aloud and, and just reading it like a novel. I mean, it's interesting to read it like a novel. But that's not the intent of this book. This book was never intended to lay on shelves and be in a library. Shh, I'm reading my Bible. Shh, shh. Be quiet, I'm trying to read my Bible. Get out in the woods. Get out in the middle of a cornfield. Go up on a mountain somewhere. Get somewhere quiet in your closet, in your car, wherever you got to get, and read the Word of God aloud. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I stood in the hospital room with my 88-year-old daddy a couple of days ago, stricken with COVID and running a high fever and fighting dementia and uh, the medicine and the COVID and all that in his mind. He didn't know who he was. He was just mumbling. He didn't know where he was, didn't know who he was. And I began to quote the Word of God in that hospital room as loud as I could. And my daddy opened up his eyes, uh, and he began to worship. Uh, he began to speak in tongues. Uh, he began to pray. Uh, he began to respond because the Word of God is alive on planet Earth. This is real. His Word is spirit and life. 
And I rebuke the spirit of death. And I defy the spirit of death. And I won't let death and depression and oppression and darkness rule over God's people. We speak life. We say, let them live, live, live. Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Dry bones are going to live. This is the resurrection and the life. Stop listening to death and darkness being spoken over your life. Stop listening to reports of negative. Oh, pastor, but that's the reality. It might be your reality, but the word of God is my reality. Who will believe the report of the Lord? Those that are being baptized, you can be dismissed to get dressed. I'm going to recap for the rest of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God is up to something. God is telling his people, listen up, listen up, listen up. Their sound has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. 1 Corinthians 14, 21. In the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to this people. And yet, for all that, they will not hear me, says the Lord. To recap what God is saying to us today, he's calling on his people around the world and in this room and in your household to listen up. Point up, everybody. Listen up. Don't turn your ears to the ground. Uh, that's all right if you want to know where the, you know, the chariots are coming from. But we, we're not doing that anymore. Put your ear to the sky. I hear the long, loud blast of a ram's horn. I hear the sound of victory in the heavens. I hear the trumpet of God saying, come on to my sanctuary. Come up higher, children of God. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Dry bones are going to live again. Your dreams, your visions, the revival is here. I am not waiting to do something, says the Lord. I am the great great I am. I am the present God. Now is the time to hear my voice. Now is the time to hearken to the voice of the Lord. Do not harden your heart, says the Lord. Listen up. My sheep, hear my voice. Tune out the wrong voices. In order to listen, you've got to stop. You've got to be still. You've got to take some time, make some time. He's not going to give you 25-hour days, so just make time. Amen? Hear his word, hearken to his word. 1 Kings 19 and verse 12, a very familiar reading. After the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord, what is, was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. We are in the season. <laughs> Pray in the Spirit with me just right now. The Lord says, you have heard the news of murders, wars, rumors of wars, 
earthquakes, uh, hurricanes, uh, the storms, uh, the floods, uh, the fires, uh, but the Lord would say to you, uh, I am in the still, small voice yet again. At this hour, uh, I will speak to my people uh, who will listen. Hear me, says the word of the Lord. Hear my voice. Uh, I have something to say to you. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the word of the Lord would say. Elijah knew that the sound of a gentle whisper was God's voice. He realized that God didn't reveal himself only in the powerful and the miraculous, but God would reveal himself as well in the stillness of the night. To look for God only in something big, a rally, a church, a conference, a highly visible leader, may be to miss him because he is often found gently whispering in the quietness of a humbled heart. Are you listening for God? Step back from the noisy activity of your busy life and listen humbly and quietly for his guidance. It may come to you as it did to the prophet Elijah in a way, in a place where you least expect it. Sweet hour. A prayer, sweet hour, a prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne. Make all my wants and wishes known. You can take a sweet, still moment, and you can be with the Lord. Close your eyes and bow your heads, and we're going to just take a moment of silence in this room. Ponder what you've heard, assess and weigh and listen.
as the people of the living God, obedient to hear his voice, we will wait upon the Lord. You can prepare in your own mind and heart for moments in your home, at your workplace, in your classroom, to hear the words, shh, did you hear that? Did you hear that? What's that I hear? What's that I hear? In the most unexpected moments, when the music's off and the television is silent and the world is black around you, what's that I hear? What's that sound? What's that I hear? What's that I hear? I hear a whisper. I hear, I hear a whisper. It's coming from another dimension. I hear a sound. Wait a minute. Is that a trumpet I hear? What's that I hear? I hear heaven calling. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God is speaking. He has not cut you off. He has not silenced you out. Yes, you can hear him whisper. You just have to be still. Be still and know that I am God, says the Lord. Be still. Whoa. Carmen penned words to a song. In the stillness of my soul, I reflect to see how your love and power have grown and moved inside of me. Say this with me. Be still, my soul. Be still, my soul. You have the power to turn it off. You have the power to stop the noises and the voices. And you have the power, yes, to tune your heart and to tune your ear to the sound coming from the throne of God, the sound of mercy, the sound of love, the sound of compassion, the sound of faith, the sound of hope, a song of peace can be sung in your dark world, a song of light can refresh you out of depression. A song of deliverance can break forth over you and victory over addiction can be yours. Be still, my soul. Be still, my soul. Silence my ears, O oh God, from the voices that sometimes are very loud and sometimes are screaming at me to doubt, to wonder, to worry, preaching a message of anxiety into my spirit, preaching a message of failure into my soul. Stop, shut up, and listen to me. The word of the Lord said in Psalm 121, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, hast thou ordained praise that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. The enemy is your flesh, and the song of praise will still your flesh mind, your flesh thoughts quicker than anything else. 
be still and know that I am God. Matthew, if you would bring your family on over here, we're going to baptize two today. Three. Do I hear four? Anybody else? We don't limit God. Amen. What's your first name, sweetheart? Jordan. Jordan? You're going to be baptized today, Jordan. The most important decision of your life is the decision. Come on in, children. We're going to baptize some children. Oh, great. The most important decision of your life is not whether or not you join the military or where you put your bank account, what school you enroll in. Most important decision you'll ever make, you're making right now today, Jordan, to follow Jesus all the days of your life. I am privileged today and honored to share this baptismal ceremony with these precious men of God that are part of this wonderful, beautiful family today, and I honor you, and I bless you, and I thank you for sharing this with me, and they're going to baptize Jordan according to Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Jordan, on profession of your faith in Jesus and that you're a new work, I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Hear the word of the Lord. So real. Amen. I no longer say it to be. <laughs> I am a child. Somebody needs to tell fear. I can't hear you. I can't hear you, fear. Oh, yeah. Is this Jaden? Jaden? Did you hear that song? From your mother's womb, the Lord chose you. You were already picked out for this day. And it's a beautiful thing when, when your will and your mind comes into full and perfect alignment with God's plan for you. He planned this day for you. This is a day once for all, a day like no other. Amen? Just like Adam's sin brought death and destruction and disease on the world, Jesus' death and obedience to death brought life eternally to you. Amen? Jaden, in the name of Jesus, I baptize you for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout amen. Oh, hallelujah. is Harry. We call him MJ. Hey, he's ready today. Amen. It's a new day. It's a new day. You get a fresh start today. You get to start all over again and begin doing some powerful things for God. You're a new creature coming out of here. Jesus, when you come up, Jesus is in you now. Okay. All right. You believe your sins are forgiven? Amen. He's repented of his sins. And according to the word of God, we baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory to God. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah.
our Pathways class. We have brand new families who have made the river their home. We've been welcoming them in into our family and today is an official time for them to have lunch with our team over in the old chapel. If you are attending Pathways or you are a part of leadership who will be in Pathways today, you are dismissed. Get ahead of the crowd and get into the old chapel quickly. There will be lunch for you. Don't miss it. You can go ahead. Everyone else, you can stand. And let's, let me bless you. Just lift both of your hands. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day of worship. We thank you for this weekend to rest, to celebrate, to be with our families, keep our families safe. I bless you with health. I bless you with strength. I bless you that you would prosper in joy, prosper in peace, prosper in patience and love and glory, prosper in the fruit of the Spirit, prosper in the gifts of the Spirit. May the Holy Ghost anoint and bless and keep you this coming week and bring you Wednesday night to church. We love you. We honor you. God, we bless your name. Now give him praise.